these are not drunken as you suppose, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is Pastor Rick Shelton from St. Louis. We had a four-week revival in his church. And initially he was skeptical and did what any good pastor should do before you invite an evangelist to your church. He flew into the meeting to come and have a look. Tell the people. I'm like the, I'm like the yes. I, uh, you know, I, uh, I, okay. I was, um, I was, <laughs> um, um, let me see. I was, um, skeptical. Skeptical. <laughs> I was, I was skeptical, <laughs> and um, um, I was skeptical. <laughs> uh, the. Um, Oh, all right. I was, I was skeptical. Um, um. All right. I I was I was <laughs> Oh, Lord help me. Holy. Uh, I was skeptical. <laughs> Okay. Okay. And um, um, okay. I was skeptical, and and, no, and I already. Okay, I said that. I I said that. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, help me. Uh, and, 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 
and um, then um, so 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 then <laughs> Ooh, oh Jesus help me uh, oh um okay Woo. all right all right i i <laughs> no, i already said that wait a minute i am and okay i all right i i i uh i came to this yeah it, it went to lakeland lakeland there you go i went to okay so i came and then i uh oh jesus uh okay borishi ponze oh como esto Fanesco Homa Hato and the most Homa Tema and no Sapate. I suppose they have my heart. No Sipande Ufo Sabande Festo. A most of Fundesco and a photo say for the Maya Stokoma. It's almost it. Oh. That's it's no more now uh it's no uh, uh now now you, you were sitting at the back now i was oh, oh. sitting at the back uh i was okay i was sitting sitting i was sitting at the back the back and then then uh uh the okay well anyway well first i had okay here it is here it is i got it here it is i was first uh these these women were were uh, they were rolling in the floor there it is okay rolling in the floor and uh and so i didn't want to i i didn't like this at all and i didn't want to be associated with this and so when i saw these women i uh saw a cameraman coming down the aisle and when he was coming down the aisle, um, I, I saw he was coming to get these women on camera, and and I thought they were flaky, and so I'm standing there by my wife, and when I see this, I sit down because he's coming right at me, and I see that I'm going to get on camera, and I and so as he's coming toward me, I didn't want to be on camera, so I slid all the way underneath the pew, down in, or under my seat. Because I didn't want to get on camera. And my wife says, why are you down there? And I said, because. I says, they're going to put this on TV and I'll be associated with this. And, and I don't even, I don't want to be associated with this. So anyway, I was sitting at the back and there at Lakeland. And all of a sudden, the, 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 the glory of God just began to move all throughout the auditorium. And I'm telling you, it started like going hitting one section of the auditorium. And then it hit another section. And I'm watching this because he's not doing anything, but he's standing there reading his scripture. He hadn't even said anything about his scripture yet. And it's blowing my mind because I'm sitting there. Because I told my wife, I said, let's go to this meeting just so we can check it out. And so, because people in our church have been asking us about this, what's happening. And, and I said, let's go so I can tell them why they shouldn't, should not get involved in this. And first hand. And so I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, the glory of God's moving down, around, around, around different sections of the auditorium. And as it's moving, 
then all of a sudden I didn't expect this I'm watching and I'm observing I'm still checking everything out but I all of a sudden I'm sitting on the back row and all of a sudden the the fire of God hit me I mean totally unexpected I mean the fire of God hit me it's like hit me from the top of my head and went all I mean went all right through me now I was raised in Pentecostal church and I've seen lots of stuff but it never happened to me I never I'd never had anything like this happen in my life I always wondered about people that said this type of stuff happened you know because I try to be pretty conservative you know I was always proud of myself that we're we're stable we're on track we're not flaky I always tell our church that we're not flaky you know we're, we're, we're stable you know and that we're gonna go for what's you know for stability and so anyway the fire of God comes all right through me and as the fire of God comes through me all of a sudden I mean to tell you I look at I, I first of all I just start crying now others were laughing others were crying I was crying I start just booing like a baby and and then after that the power of God went into my right arm and my hand starts shaking just like this and I can't stop it it's just like shaking like this and I remember thinking literally I looked at my hand and I thought Lord you know this is what we throw people out of the church for you know when they start acting weird like this and my hands shaking and I thought that's weird and I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I start falling sideways in my chair and I'm just like can't sit up straight anymore and I'm just blubbering all over the place and crying and shaking and and as I'm, as, as I'm doing this I remember thinking boy I, I hope my wife's not watching me and because, you see my wife I knew she wasn't though because if anything if God ever moves my wife is always one of the first ones I mean she'll be out on the floor she'll be out I mean she's the one she's susceptible you know and and but I'm but not me I'm always trying to check things out and so I remember thinking well she's not watching me because I mean if, if this happened to me she must be out on the floor somewhere but I just I'm shaking I'm leaning over and I just look over at her like this to see what she's done when I look over at her like this I mean she's sitting there just looking at me smiling <laughs> just smile looking at me and and that was a much a miracle to me is what was happening to me that nothing was happening to her it blew my mind and the, so after this I mean the glory of God hit me so strong I mean I told my wife when we went back to her hotel I says I don't know all about this I got a lot of questions or some things I didn't understand I said something I just I just don't know about I said but all I know is I have known the presence of God in my life and this is the same presence of the Holy Spirit that I've known before I said I don't understand everything that's happening but I know the presence of Jesus and God has touched me tonight I cried all the way home got up the next morning had a new love for prayer and the Word of God greater than I've had in the past I mean I've been a changed person I went home that Sunday and I decided that I was not going to say a word to our congregation at, at all well I got up there and I didn't even intend to do it but it just spilled out these words I didn't say where I've been matter of fact I told him I said I ain't gonna tell you I ain't saying where I've been or what I what what where I was or who I was with or anything I said but all I'm gonna say is folks your pastor has been touched by God with a new fresh touch from heaven that's all I said and when I said that the same power of God that was falling there in Florida fell upon our congregation began to fall in our congregation and people began to get touched by the Holy Spirit I mean that was in January and it blew my mind because I didn't say anything to them I didn't tell them about anything and all of a sudden it just all this wild stuff's happened the glory of God is hitting the place and all of a sudden, I mean, you know, up until this time, used to, I used to have real healing ministry and lots of miracles. For years, I'd let that go by the wayside for, you know, for something better. You know, I wanted to be respectable, you know, and, di and dignified. And so anyway, and so when I ever did, if somebody asked me to pray for them, usually, you know, we'd sometimes get somebody healed, but not much power seemed to be prevalent there. All of a sudden, I started laying hands on people and people just, I mean, power God knocking them everywhere, people getting healed, people getting set free. It was blowing my mind. I told my wife, I said, this is so far the greatest sign I see that this is an incredible new move of God in our generation that this is not staying with one man but it seems like that anyone who gets near the fire of God and the river of God and just gets a small dose they go back and they've got the same transmission of the Holy Ghost is what they got I said that's awesome
I just felt like, I, you know, I mean, there was such power manifest. I mean, the glory without saying anything. A couple days later, we get up in the morning, we're in our bedroom, and my wife tells me, I said, what's wrong? She said, I got a headache. So I did like I'll always do. I'll just pray for her, and I just laid my hand on her, and just to pray, you know, the headache could go away, you know? And we do that, and usually the headache goes away, you know, but that's better, you know, headache go away. Well, I'm, we're standing there in the bedroom, and I'm just laying my hand gently on her, praying for the headache to go away. The power of God knocks my wife back on the bed. And I thought, whoa, this is really strange. I've, you know, this is ha happening everywhere, this anointing on us. So anyway, I went to, uh, no, I didn't. I went, anyway, yes, I did. I went, <laughs> I went to see Rodney again. I said, look, I, God spoke to my heart and said to invite him to come to St. Louis. And I said, if that's going to happen, I don't need to go check this out more and see, answer some questions. And so I went and I spent some more time with him and, and, uh, and just began to see what God was doing. God began to touch me more and more and more. One night when I went to, see, to his next meeting, uh, you know, I mean, it's never happened to me in my life. Power of God hit me and I was drunk. I've never been drunk in the spirit of my life. I was drunk. I was so drunk. They had to, I mean, they had to carry me out to the car. And they carried one guy under each arm, carries me out to the car. I get out to the car in the park. When I got in the middle of the parking lot, I start jumping up and down, acting like a crazy man. I mean, I'm it just embarrassed to tell you that I was acting like a crazy man. And, and I, they got me in the car. I was driving the car, but they said, put him in the back seat. He can't drive. They put me in the back seat and they put uh, my administrator who was with us in the front seat and told him to drive. And so they got him to drive. When I'm in the back seat, I'm just drunk in the spirit. And inadvertently, while I was just, you know, having this wild time, he puts, he says, let me drive. He says, ah, nothing wrong with me. He hadn't been touched yet, you see, in the meetings. And so anyway, he puts the thing in reverse to back out of the parking lot. When he does, inadvertently, I slapped him on the shoulder. And when I did, the power of God hit him like a lightning bolt. He straightened out in the seat and started shaking and making some kind of siren noise. It's the craziest thing you ever heard in your life. They said, what are we going to do now? They pulled him out from under the wheel. The next guy, one of our other guys says, I'll get behind the wheel. There's nothing wrong with me. He got behind the wheel. Power of God hit him when he sat in the seat and he started shaking under the power of God. We couldn't find anybody to drive. I invite Rodney to come to St. Louis. He comes to St. Louis on March 27th. We started the meeting. As he said, from the first day, the power of God so hit St. Louis. And I mean St. Louis. It wasn't just with Life Christian Center. But I mean from day one. The glory. Matter of fact, the night before the meeting started, we were in a restaurant. My wife and I and Rodney and Adonica. And we just begin, the night before the meeting started, we're standing there and just begin to talk about the meeting. When we begin to talk, we're standing in line waiting for our, our table. When we were talking about the meeting, the power of God comes on us right there in the waiting area where everybody is. And all four of us practically fell out in the spirit. I had to hang on to the wall, start crying, crying. Rodney's hanging on to the wall. I'm hanging on to the wall, just talking about what God was going to do. We started the next day and the, and the place was packed and the power of God began to hit the place. And I mean, it was while the glory of God came so strong. One night in the meeting, Rodney asked Adonica to come and give a testimony. Uh, and she came up and, and the glory of God was so much on her, she couldn't talk. And so he says, Rodney says, well, I'll tell you what she was going to say. He tries to tell it and he couldn't tell it. The glory of God was on him. It, you know, I came up there, you know, being a local pastor, you know, to say something. And he called me up there. When I came up there, I couldn't talk. And all I could, you know, I could just could say the glory. And the power of God hit the whole place. I've never felt anything like, like in my life. It felt literally like someone took kerosene and poured it all over the stage and took a match and lit the stage. It felt like we were in fire throughout the whole stage. And I guess throughout the whole auditorium. There were over 400 pastors that were touched through, you know, in person in those meetings, in those months of meetings. And, uh, and, and it spread everywhere. By the, by the third week of the meeting, it had so uh, saturated all of St. Louis that things were happening like one young boy went to school, a young elementary school boy, and he's in class in, in a public school in St. Louis, and he's sitting there, and the glory of God's still on him from the night before, and he's sitting there with this funny-looking grin on his face, and his teacher, unsaved teacher in a public school, looks at him and says, have you been over there to those revival meetings in that church? One of the pastors, one of the pastors in the area wanted to call our church to get some information. And he picks up and dials 411, you know, for information for St. Louis. And when he does, the operator, when he says, I want information for Life Christian Center. And she says, oh, she says, are you going over to the revival? 
I mean, it started, you, it, God spread, started spreading it everywhere. And now in St. Louis, I mean, literally, there are churches everywhere touched. One couple left our church because they didn't like what was going on. They didn't, didn't want catering to the revival and the anointing of God. And so they decided they're going to leave. I didn't know they were leaving. They left. The Sunday they left, they went to another church in town that thought was, they thought, well, we'll go to another place where this ain't happening. Safe zone. A safe zone. And when they went there, and that church hadn't been touched. But the Sunday they went there, the pastor got up to preach, and the power of God fell on that place, and, and the same anointing broke out there. And they told the pastor, they said, there's nowhere we can go and run from this. It's everywhere. I went up and held a meeting after that in, to, at a church in Wisconsin and had, held a revival at meeting in Wisconsin for two weeks. Power of God fell in that place. And one of the businessmen in the church up there in Wisconsin was on the phone at that day to a client, a secular client in Texas. I mean, you know, he didn't know the guy was a Christian. And after he got through the business call, this was in Texas, he was calling and he was from Wisconsin. And he says to the guy, he says, uh, no, the guy on the, no, the other guy said to him, the guy from Texas said to him, he said, before we get off the phone, he says, you go to church, don't you? And the guy said, yes. He says, well, this guy from Texas said, let me ask you a question. Is there anything strange happening at your church? And this guy in Wisconsin says, well, funny you should ask me. Yeah. He says, like, the guy in Wisconsin said, yeah, like what? The guy in Texas says, well, like joy? I'm like laughing? And this guy said, well, strange you should say that, but yes, it is. It's happening right now. And he says, oh, good. He says, I thought we were the only ones. He says, this couple in our church a few weeks back went to St. Louis, and they were in meetings in St. Louis, and the glory of God fell on them. They came back to Texas, and now the glory of God has hit our church in Texas, and the whole church is hit with the power of God and the anointing and the, the joy. He says, we didn't know what was going on. He said, but now God's hit the whole, the whole city. He said, now two Baptist pastors are coming, and they got hit by the power of God, and now it's hit the two Baptist churches. We've got a couple of nuns and priests that have come. They've been hit by the power of God. Two nuns came the other night, he says, and he says, they got hit. He says, they, at 30 minutes after there, they got hit for, under the power of God, and they were there for three hours. And I'm just telling you this to say that it's this, that's just from one little stream that's flowing out of this revival, and it's spreading everywhere. Uh, God's touching people everywhere. And I'll tell you one thing. I'm not a skeptic anymore. And I'll tell you what, God, here's the thing. I'm a skeptic until you show me that it's real, that it's God. Once it's real, I'm going for it. And I'll tell you, this is real, and God is changing our nation through this. I I I'll say one last thing. I'll say one last thing, and that is that I've prayed for years, God, touch our nation. God, we need revival. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't know if there was any hope. I thought, Lord, things are so bad. Can you do it? But I didn't know not only could he do it, but almost in an instant, in a short period of time, God is spreading revival for fires around our nation, and it's changing us. Hallelujah.